I gave my physics students a problem. A plane is traveling from Atlanta to New York City round trip. The entire time, the wind is blowing a constant direction at 10 miles per hour. This means that the plane is traveling against the wind on the way to New York and with the wind on the way back to Atlanta. The pilot says this is fine. It's going to be the same amount of time either way because the wind is going to help me go faster on the way back. But some dumb idiot baby says no, overall it's still going to be slower than if there was no wind at all. Now all this talk about airplanes and velocities and wind is fine and all, but it is really boring. Now if you are here for the boring part, go ahead and skip to this point in the video. I'm going to do the smart thing and turn it into a language we can all understand. Super Mario Maker 2, baby! The game we've all been yelled at by our mom to stop playing and do our homework. Well, look at me now, mom. I'm giving everyone an education using Mario Maker, and I'm getting money for it. But how does Mario Maker fit in with a physics problem about airplanes? Well, to do that, we're gonna need to go to my super... secret... level. Okay, it's not that secret. Here's the level code. The purpose of this level is to find out which of the three routes is the fastest. On the bottom, you have a fast treadmill going all one direction. In the middle, you have a slightly slower treadmill going all one direction. And on the top, you don't have any treadmill at all. On the other end of these treadmills, there's a key that you have to take back to the key door. The key door goes directly to the exit. There's also a sideways springboard to quickly turn around. This way it won't affect the experiment too much. On the way back, you have to run against the treadmills. If you jump repeatedly trying to go faster, it actually will slow you down, so don't try. Right here, you have four options. One, it doesn't matter because they are all going to cancel out anyway. Two, the treadmills are always going to slow you down, so you want to choose the top route. Three, the treadmills are only sometimes faster, so the middle route is going to work, but the bottom route doesn't. Four, the fast treadmill is the fastest. So which of these options do you think is correct? Go ahead and write your predictions in the comments below. I'll wait. Heh, <laughs> just kidding, no I won't. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. When I presented this problem, most of my students guessed that it doesn't matter, and that the treadmills are going to cancel each other out. Experimentally, we can see that this is incorrect, but why? In order to explain this properly, we're going to have to use some math. Because it wouldn't be an educational video unless I prove to you that I'm smarter than the 12 year olds that watch this channel. So in order to solve this problem, uh, we're only going to be using one equation, that is distance equals velocity times time. A uh, very simple equation, most of you probably know it already. Uh, and to get a better idea of what we're looking at, I'm going to go ahead and draw a diagram. Uh, draw a nice blue arrow. Represent the direction it's going. Mario will be this red square. That is also, for the first part, going in this direction. And then, on the way back, Mario will be going in this direction. So this will help us get a better idea of which velocity to use. I'm going to go ahead and say that the one-way distance of a treadmill is D. And I will go ahead and also draw the case for Mario without a treadmill, which will simply be this box with an arrow without adding any velocities whatsoever. So. To simply solve the case for Mario without a treadmill, um, he's going to be going back and forth across the treadmill twice, so he's going to take this distance d two times. So on the left-hand side, we'll have 2d is equal to 
the velocity of Mario times time, or the total time is equal to 2d over the velocity of Mario. And this right here, I'll go ahead and circle as the finished equation for Mario without a treadmill. Now, for Mario's case without the treadmill, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. So we are going to have to split it up into two different distances. The distance that Mario is going towards the key and the distance that Mario is going away from the key. So for the first distance, since Mario is going with the treadmill, we are going to add the velocities. So this will be velocity of Mario plus velocity of the treadmill times t. And for the distance uh, going towards the key door, once he's already grabbed the key, is going to be subtracting these velocity vectors, which is going to be velocity of Mario minus velocity of the treadmill times t. Let's go ahead and solve this for t1 and t2. So for t1, we are going to have d over bm plus bt, and t2 is equal to the same d over bm minus bt. We know that the total time is going to be t is equal to t1 plus t2, or we can fill it in to have t is equal to d over bm plus bt plus d over bm minus bt. So now that we have this equation, it doesn't really look like an equation that we can compare to our first one. Remember, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to compare to see which time is larger. So we're going to simplify this a little bit. And the way we're going to do that is by multiplying by some fraction that will cancel out these terms without destroying the entire equation. So on the top and bottom here, I'm going to multiply by both of the denominators, vm plus vt times vm minus vt. And on the bottom, remember, we have to multiply by 1 here. So this is going to be the same thing, vm plus vt and vm minus vt. The goal of this is to get both fractions with a common denominator. That way we can simplify it into one fraction. So the way we can simplify this is if we multiply over the top portion, uh, we'll notice that this and this will cancel out. So we can write d times the other one, vm minus vt over vm plus vt times vm minus vt, and then with the other one, the different one will be canceled. This one will cancel with the denominator here. So this will be d times vm plus vt over the same denominator, vm plus vt times vm minus vt. We can simplify this a little bit more by combining it into one fraction. So we can pull out the d, <laughs> and then we can go ahead and multiply vm minus vt plus vm plus vt. You're going to notice these are going to cancel out in a second. This is all over vm plus vt times vm minus vt. And I'm going to simplify this one as well. To continue simplifying, we can simply combine what's on the top. So d will be vm plus vm is 2vm minus vt plus vt is 0. So the numerator is finished. And if we foil this out, we will end up with vm squared minus vt squared. And then to simplify further, 
we can say this is 2 D and on the bottom here I'm going to pull out a VM I know this doesn't have a VM but if we pull out a VM then we can just make this a fraction of VM to, to, to compensate for it so I'm going to pull out the VM which will cancel up here so up, up top we're only going to have 2D and we're going to have V M minus B T squared over B M all right there we have it now we have two functions to represent when Mario is on a treadmill and when Mario is not on a treadmill when Mario is on a treadmill the time it takes is going to be equal to 2d over the speed of Mario whereas when Mario is on a treadmill it is going to be equal to 2d over Mario speed minus some positive value of the ratio of the treadmills and Mario speed and because this is always subtracting a positive value this denominator is always going to be smaller which will result in a larger amount of time it takes to complete the level. It was a lot of fun to make this video, combining my two favorite things, Mario Maker and Physics Word Problems. Subscribe now if you would like, but you'll get the most bang for your buck if you head over to twitch.tv slash tonesblowns and catch my livestream. Thanks for watching!